Hello, I told you this was going to be something different. This is a cool, and it's like, it's so cool, I can't get over how cool this is, and I'll, I'll explain why in a second. A digital multimeter, DMM3, from, I'm going to say, the late 70s, early 80s. And there's not a lot else to say about it. Um, I was given this, gifted this by a wonderful gentleman called David, who provided us with some bits from the channel, and I've got a boombox of his that's awaiting belts. But... He kind of gave me a bit of an idea with it when he messaged me and said he had it and said that didn't have a power cable for it. I don't even know if it works. And um, I, I kind of got it and put it in a, in, in a cupboard there at the start of the week and forgot about it. Had a little look at it today and I'll show you why it's so cool. Now the display on this is Nixie tubes. Look at that. You can just make it out from inside there. That is a Nixie tube display. Now, to me, who doesn't like Nixie tubes? It looks like it's light in there, but it's not. It's just the reflection of my, uh, my my lights in here. So as soon as I saw Nixie tubes, I thought I need to get this working. So this is what this video is about. I really want to see if I can get this to display. Hopefully, I can use it alongside my oscilloscope because it just looks cool. So I'm going to open it up and I explain why I need to open it up. So on the back of this unit, we have a DC supply, which seems to be some kind of DIN cable, DC and AC switch, power switch, and the AC supply plug is really weird. And that is why I've ended up with it, because he asked me if I could fit an IEC connector to it. And then it, it kind of got to the stage where it went, look, you can just have it, do what you want with it. So what's the first thing I did? That's right, I bought an IEC connector for it, so that seemed like the most sensible option. I'm going to see if I can fit this to it, and I I'm, I'm really, really hope I can get this working just to look at it. So for those who don't know, IEC connector is a bog standard kettle lead in the UK. This is what 3-pin plug plugs into. Uh, and on the back we've got live neutral and an earth. So I'm hoping that there's room in the back of this to perhaps make a little space and attach this. So let's have a look. Now I don't see a lot of point in making a guide video to this because I can't imagine as many people who have one of these lying about who want a guide on how to do what I'm doing with it. But I just thought I'd make a little video as I make the little modifications. So the whole thing's held together with these big long screws here. I'm not a fan of test equipment and taking it apart because sometimes there can be some crazy high voltages in it. This hasn't got CRT or anything on it, so I, I presume it's just test equipment. I'd like to think really that I can kind of calibrate it as well. There are some calibration points seemingly on the side. Maybe I can find a power supply, test it with my digital multimeter, and then see if I can get this to display around about the same voltage and make it almost useful or semi-useful. Let's see. I'm not entirely convinced as to how accurate it's going to be. But let's take this thing to bits and see if there's space for this connector. So once those four screws are out, it would seem to me that the whole thing just kind of separates. Notice how it sounded easy. Whoa, look at that. I love old electronics. And I imagine if you're on this channel, you also love old electronics, but that is old electronics. Um, there is a, a number there, 31959, ACDC converter and switching unit assembly. I'm going to avoid putting my fingers or my face inside this just in case there's any caps that are charged, but it's been sat around for a long time, so hopefully there won't be. All right, this plug on the back is pretty well labeled, you know, the live and neutral and stuff on the back of it is labeled exactly as I'd expect, so it should hopefully be a case of perhaps if I can dremel into this case and make the correct hole there'll be enough room on the other side for me to fit the plug. So this plug is removed by a nut on the back just by uh, loosening it and I'm going to fit it around this way I believe. I'm going to put the earth on this side of the chassis. There seems to be a little bit more room on this side which will allow me to fully isolate these points and get them in there and make sure that they're not touching any of the chassis or anything like that. So the first job is to remove this old plug, pull it through and remove the wires. That took some doing and it's clearly been on there for forever, I would suggest actually. Once to get this, uh, this nut off, I think I'll be able to pull that through. Ah, 
I see. And then we can rewire. So just while this is loose on the bench, I want to protect these Nixie tubes because there's absolutely no way of providing a, a replacement. So I've just kind of taped that, that front in place. Hopefully that'll give me adequate protection from me, from myself. All right, so that's off. And that can go into the parts bin if I should ever need it, soon as I'm a bit of a hoarder. Just because it's cool, I think that's kind of Bakelite. What does that say on there? Yeah, Bakelite, BL. Pretty cool. Right, with that removed then, this is about a one mil thick bit of mild steel, zinc coated steel. It's riveted in place. As much as I'd like to try and remove it to work on it, I might have to do it in situ. For some reason it's screwed on that side, but it is riveted on that side. So, I'm gonna try and make myself a template for here and find the ideal place to fit this, I think. I'd like the earth, you can see it's through there, there's kind of a, a circuit board, dead smack in the middle. If I can, there you go. There's kind of a circuit board dead smack in the middle of where I want to put it. Now this seems to want to fit, but I think I'd rather have the, the, the power leads on the left hand side of it and the earth on this side of it. And I'll extend the earth I think, because the other solder point for the earth is there. So I think I can desolder that and run an entirely new earth cable. Whereas the rest of it, it will mean a full disassemble because the brown goes to the on off switch and the blue goes also to that board. So, because it's all riveted, it's either do it that way or disassemble the entire thing and drill a load of rivets out. So we'll go for the easiest option. I think I can get a Dremel here, which is fine. I just need to make sure I've got the correct positioning of it. So let's mark that out. So unfortunately, after some measuring, if I were to position this where I want it, there is actually no way to screw it in the top. If you can see, it doesn't really give us any space. I have to line the bottom bit up with that rivet. If I can see that. I have to line the bottom bit up with that rivet there. Which would mean removing the rivet, which is fine, and running a, a bolt all the way through, we can do that. But it leaves us with no room on the top and obviously the case has got to go on there as well so it's going to stick into the case so my only other option is really is to run a direct power cable through and then tap it into this and then blank this hole off i think that's going to be my go-to as much as i'd really like to have this because it's it looks a lot neater there just isn't the space in the case. I can't put it down here because the components inside. I can't put it any any further away. It doesn't fit sideways. So I'm gonna have to go for a direct power cable, I think. So as it's earth, I don't wanna run an unearthed cable to it. I'd rather keep it earthed. So I'm gonna have to run three core to it and return that earth rather than the usual two core kind of, you know, um, what we'd usually have for a PlayStation or a tape deck or a CD player or anything like that. I'm going to run three core to it and I think we'll put it in there. We'll knot it in so it sits inside nice and neat out the way and can't pull through. And then we'll seal this hole up so that it's a bit neater. And for safety if I'm honest with you. So here's the plan. I can desolder these two because they're just on this main board here. So that's good. And I can run these through this three core, kind of around the side there like that into the points. The only one I need to connect is to the switch because I can't get to the bloody switch and it's riveted in. So it's the only one that I need to solder to as a connection and then isolate. Wish me luck, I'll start with desoldering these two. So do the earth first and kind of get a grip on this. And that's out. Wasn't on with much of a connection, to be honest with you. So the earth's the bottom one. Hopefully I can open that up. I'll use a solder sucker on it. Beautiful. Right, so there's one threaded. Let's just get that connected up. Nice and neat. Yep. 
All right, so now the blue is in there. The next one is the brown, which is the central one, but that goes from there to the on-off switch. Now, I'm not convinced I can get to the on-off switch. I'm going to have to have a look inside. If not, I'm going to have to join those and then isolate them from the rest of the unit. No, nope, we're good. I managed to get into the switch, so hopefully I can just directly wire this onto the switch to be as safe as possible. So I've now tinned this, this last wire, which means you apply a little bit of solder to the wire before you go ahead and try and solder it to the uh, to the switch because there's absolutely limited space. I can only just get my finger in. So I've got to try and position this kind of with a pair of pliers and then touch the solder and iron on through the little gap that's appeared. And hopefully that's us hardwired. So this is a bit I wish you could see, but I can't position anything uh, onto where I'm trying to solder. So you're gonna have to kind of see me trying to go in through the side here without burning myself. And hopefully I can just tin that. I can just get that solder to connect. Whew, now no surgeons feel. So we've got these two wires connected up and right down in there I managed to connect. If I can get that to focus, I can manage to connect directly to the switch. So we're all uh, isolated, there's no issues. I'm gonna pull this cord through here. We've got a knot in it there to retain it. So let's do that. Give these Nixie tubes a clean and then recase it and give it a test, I'm very excited. And there are our tubes in their absolute glory. Um, they look pretty clean actually. I'm gonna give them a little bit of IPA clean over the top. And then I'm gonna also IPA kind of glass clean the back of that just to basically make it as good as possible to be able to see what's going on. I'll tell you what, it's a good job I did because that was uh, dirtier than I thought, but it's all good. Right, so we're all set up, connections checked and rechecked. Um, let's fire this up and see what it looks like. I'm kind of going to do this from a bit of a distance. I hate touching 240, I'll be honest with you, but let's give it a go. Oh my God, look at that. It's really difficult to actually see it on the camera, to be honest with you. It's giving off a bit of a, a whistle. Let's see if I can get a better view of this. Yeah, it's a bit better. I've dropped the light a little bit there now. And as you can see, oh man, this exceeded my expectations. That is uh, cooler than I thought it was going to be. Oh my God. Impedance is going crazy as it just resets. Uh, DC. Get plus or minus on DC as well, lit up, that's pretty cool. Wow. I am absolutely ecstatic with this. Right, now it's time to test something, I suppose. I'm just going to um, put my probes, if I can actually input some probes into this. Yep. It's funny, they're kind of like wire connectors as opposed to banana plugs as we'd call them, I suppose. Uh, let's find like a battery we can test. All right, so we are in DC, as it says plus on the top there, that's pretty cool. And I've got a AA battery. I'm just gonna test this now. So it's a negative pole on, and a positive coming on. 1.6 volts, look at that. As near 1.59, as near as damn it. Exactly what you'd expect from a double A battery. So it works. And those tubes are absolutely gorgeous. I'll try and zoom in a little bit closer if I can while they're working. It's really difficult to capture it actually. But let me have a go. Sorry for your eyes there. This is really difficult to capture because it's so bright. It's just kind of settling down now. I put uh, many volts on and it's just settling down. But yeah, I'm really happy with that. Even if it's just something to look at, I think I'm going to most definitely use this. There's a bit of a close-up as well. So there we are, bit of a daft little one, this one. Nothing is... Uh, simple as just providing power to something then it works it's actually really satisfying when these things happen 
you can see the uh, the filaments there inside the tubes just ticking away to each other I'm really happy with this I'm going to stick it on top of my oscilloscope and have a play with it but if you like my videos please like and subscribe this is a little bit different than what I usually do something really not really that in depth if I'm honest with you but I'm really happy with the end result so have yourselves a good week and I'll see you soon